And my heart starts changing Oh, I'm gonna worship Till I mean every word Cause the way I feel And the fear I'm facing Doesn't change who you are Or what you deserve Come on I give you my worship You still deserve it Amen. Why don't we stand to our feet this morning, this evening, this evening. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him it is nighttime. <laughs> so turn to your other neighbor and tell him Brother Brett is getting mixed up again. <laughs> All right. Amen. It's so good to see everybody tonight in the house of the Lord. Amen. Turn to your other neighbor that, that's either that you didn't talk to. Give him a high five and let him know that you're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's good to see everybody here, here tonight. Amen. I'm excited to hear the preaching of the word tonight. Is Bible study. Amen. This is where you get get some meat on your bones, if you will. Get into the word of God. But but, but, uh, but before Pastor comes, man, I want to read a verse of scripture. Second Corinthians uh, chapter number one, verse three and four. It says, "Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort." comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Amen. How many are thankful that we serve a God that comforts us? Amen. And in our times of trouble, He is there. He is there to fight our battles. Amen. And I think it ought to be right tonight before we uh, start singing and worshiping. I wonder if we can lift up our voice tonight and begin to sing praises to him. Amen. Can we do that together? God, we praise you tonight, Jesus. God, we are so thankful. Come on, let him hear your voice. Come on, let him hear your voice tonight. God, we are so thankful, Lord, that we're in your house. We're so thankful that you are our comforter, Lord. You are our strength. You are our fortress that we run into. And God, we thank you tonight for the opportunity to be in your house, to be here and, and, and hear your word and to sing uh, our, your praises to you. God, we thank you tonight, Jesus. Lord, we give you honor and praise. Come on, will you lift up your voice, clap your hands. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, church. was buried beneath my shame who could carry that kind of weight it was my doom till I met you I was breathing but
glorious day when the Lord says. heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter I was an orphan but you call me a citizen of Come on, can we do that together? Come on, can you shout from the top of your lungs tonight? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, can you give God a shout of praise tonight? <laughs> Amen. I believe that, that strongholds can be broken. Amen. When we shout. Amen. I think back to, to uh, when Israel was marching around Jericho. Amen. For six days, they're just, just walking around. And then on that seventh day, they were, God told them, hey, you're going to walk around seven times today. And then at the end of it, you're just going to stay quiet. No, God said, hey, I want you to shout. And I believe that when, that when the children of Israel shouted, like their, their, their voice what started to go out on it because they were shouting so loud amen because they believe that hey i'm we're gonna follow what god says and and hey when we follow what god says amen these these walls are gonna fall something is gonna break amen i wonder tonight amen if we can give god a shout of praise and believe that walls can fall amen and believe that walls can come tumbling down amen i wonder if somebody here tonight you may be struggling amen with with uh Whatever it may be, whether it's addiction, depression, anxiety, whatever it may be, I believe that walls can fall down tonight, amen, when we shout and we declare how good God is, amen. Can we do that together in the one, in the, at the count of three? Can you just give God a shout of praise? One, two, three, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of praise, hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, come on. I believe that our God is more than able. I believe that he's a healer. Amen. I believe that he is a healer. Amen. I don't believe that there's a, a disease, that there's a sickness that is too big or too small for my God. Amen. I'm, I, I know there, there's a few that believe that. Amen. I believe that our God is a healer. Amen. I believe that when, when, when we pray and we have faith, amen, I believe that, that, that something gets inside, that, that something wells up in, in God. He's like, you know what? They have some faith, and I'm going to go down. I'm going to act. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down. I'm going to do Amen, what they are asking me to do, amen. And so we're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight, amen. I, brother, uh, brother Brandon and Emerson are homesick. Uh, we're going to pray for uh, uh, Gracie uh, Pan Pantoya, amen, uh, one-year-old in need of a miracle and a healing. We are continuing to pray for Hannah. I see her here tonight, amen. I believe that God can heal, amen. I believe that. Amen. I don't care what doctors may say. I don't care what physicians may say. But I believe that my God is a healer tonight. Amen. Do you believe that? 
Amen. Do you believe that our God is still able? Do you still believe that He is on the throne? Amen. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Amen. I wonder, amen, I wonder if we can bind together. I wonder if we can bind together all across this building. And I wonder if we can pray the prayer of faith and ask God to move in these needs tonight. Can we do that together? Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, we know that you are a healer. We've seen you do miracles. We've seen signs and wonders. And God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up these names, Lord. You know exactly the circumstances. You know exactly the diagnosis, God. And we know that, that God, that you are able, Lord, that by your spoken word, God, you can speak a word and healing can transpire, Lord. Healing can begin to come into, into people's bodies, Lord. And we pray that in the name of Jesus tonight. God, we pray for Brother Brandon and Ann Emerson tonight. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come against sickness. We come against the flu. We come against uh, uh, the cold. In the name of Jesus, heal them, God, right now. We pray for Gracie. God, in the name of Jesus, we know that you are able to perform miracles. And we know that you are a healer. God, touch her right now in Jesus' name, Lord. And we pray for Hannah. God, we pray for Hannah Lopez right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, you are a healer. God, you are a miracle worker. God, you are you are the, the one that, that made this body. You are the one that, pre- that gave us the breath of life, Lord. And we believe that you are more than able, God, to speak a word. And full healing can come to be. Full healing can transpire in the name of Jesus, God. We declare it in your mighty name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Why don't you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Hey, welcome to Family Worship Center, and we just want to say thank you for taking your time out of your day and spending it with us. Whether you're joining us on live stream or in person, we just want to say thank you. Before we get going, I just would love to tell you about our connecting cards. These help us so much to keep in touch or provide you updates about our events and services happening here at FWC. We truly would love to get to know you just a little bit more. You can fill this out by clicking the link in our live stream or getting one in person from our ushers or going to the Welcome Center. Hello FWC, this is your weekly announcements. Tuesday is Worship in the Word, 6.30 is prayer and 7 o'clock is service. Then Saturday morning there's going to be Understand the End Times class at 11 a.m. in the sanctuary. Then that following night, the Marins are going to have a game night. So that's going to be happening at 6 p.m. at the church. Then we'll be back here on, for our Sunday service, 9.30 is prayer, and 10 o'clock is service. Incoming events, a general conference will be held in Long Beach. So registration opens February 2nd. It is free, so make sure you register on that day. If you need more information, go to the UPCI website, and you'll get more information there. Hello, I'm Dr. Wilson with the Robert Reese CSTI Bible School. I want to personally invite you to join us. Classes are starting soon. Just listen to what our students are saying about their experience. Welcome to CSTI. My name is Wanda Ramos. I'm happy to tell you about the last two years I've been in the class. I've learned a lot from all the preachers that have taught us the classes, Brother Butler, Brother Weezar, Brother Devereaux, just to name a few of them, Brother Hodges. It's been an honor to learn. It's, no matter how long you've been in church, you just, it's great to learn from the Bible. And I've learned a lot in the last two years, and we'll be continuing for year three and four. And it's just an honor to be in the Robert Reese CSPI School. Thank you. Don't forget to visit our website at wearefwc.org for more information if needed. Amen. Amen. There's... I know that, uh, I mean, CSTI, uh, I don't see Dr. Wilson. Uh, there he is. He's over there. You changed seats on me. You know, you, you, you're bouncing around. Uh, CSTI registration, the final day to register, I believe, is tonight. Is that the Jan, Jan, they're going to be starting classes in February? Amen. So uh, if, if, uh, if you want to participate in CSTI, get into the Word more. I want to encourage you to do that tonight. You can see Dr. Wilson right after service, and he'll get you all the info on that. It is a great, great thing. We also wanted to to mention about uh, contribution statements for 2023 are available. If you haven't got those yet, you can see Sister Nicole uh, um, 
ask is uh, for those, and, and or if you want those emailed, uh, we can do that as well. Just come and see me, and uh, and we'll email those statements out to you uh, right before tax season. Amen. All right. I'm, I'm really trying here. I, I need some smiles here. You know, I, I know I said taxes and everything, and probably everybody, you know, wants to throw something at me, but uh, amen. Um, we also wanted to mention that uh, there's only two more Saturdays of Understanding the End Times in this current series. And so that, uh, right after, uh, they will be starting back Understanding the End Times in March. Amen. So don't miss out on that. And then uh, tonight, Pastor is going to be uh, continuing his series uh, that he's been doing for the month of January and February. And then next Tuesday, we're going to be starting a new series. Amen. Talking about the heart and uh, being at Valentine's and everything. You know, it's the heart month. So uh, don't miss out on that. Tuesday nights are not the night to miss out on. Amen. Amen. Tuesday nights are not the night to, to, to miss out on. And uh, I promise you that uh, you will be blessed and, and uh, God will just continue to, to grow. How many want to grow? Amen. I want to grow. I want to grow into what God wants me to be. Amen. So why don't we stand to our feet one more time. And we have our offering basket up front here. Amen. So why don't we go to the Lord. Let's ask him to bless this tithe and offering tonight. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight, God. We thank you for your spirit that is in this house, your presence that is here. Lord, we want to continue worshiping you just like we did in, in song and worship. Uh, we want to do that in our giving tonight. Lord, we ask that you bless both gift and giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's march. Let's worship as we give. Amen. there's a God who loves us. A couple of us know that. If you don't know that today, I want to let you know that there's a God who loves you tonight. And he wants to wrap you in his arms. Amen. Why don't you lift your hands this evening and let's prepare our hearts for the word tonight. Amen. Can you help me out with that tonight? Say there's a God who loves us. in the presence of the Lord. Wrap me in your arms, Lord. Wrap me in your arms. 
say, take me to that place, Lord. Take me to that place, Lord. To that secret place where I can be with you, Jesus. And you can make me like you. Oh, Lord, wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Lord, wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. your prayer tonight. Hallelujah. Let's praise him together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 It's good to see everyone that is here tonight. And uh, God bless you for being faithful to the kingdom because he is faithful to us. Amen. Where two or three are gathered together in his name. What's he gonna do? Yes, sir. There's my Bible man, Brother Fred. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, it's it's uh, so good to have uh, I hope I'm saying this right, Shifra. to you. We're, I got a lump two, two lessons into one tonight, so I'm not going to read it verse by verse like we've been going through Ephesians, but I short, got shortened up a little bit because I'm running out of uh, two tonight. Amen. But um, I mean, appreciate the service we had on Sunday. Amen. Dr. Wilson sends you to the Holy Ghost. And let me just say, uh, God, God, there's an undercurrent of things. There, God is calling us to a level that we haven't been in a long time, maybe to a level we've never been. So, and, uh, it's going to take some sacrifice. It's going to take ourselves, putting ourselves on the altar. So please be here Sunday. We want to continue the, in that vein and just let God do what he wants to do with each one of us. Amen. How many is really willing to lift your hands and tell God, God, do with me whatever you want me to do. Hallelujah. Whatever you want to do, God, mold me, shape me, and make me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, Ephesians chapter number five. Um, we're going to start there. Verse number one says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Verse number two. And walk in love as Christ ha also hath loved us. And hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Verse number three, but fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Verse four, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather give it, uh, giving of thanks. Verse 5, For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater 
hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Amen. Uh, let no man deceive you uh, with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Amen. So Paul's writing to the church in Ephesus, and he's, he's giving them some basic uh, information of how to follow God. Amen. God gave his all. He sacrificed for us. And let me just tell you right up, this easy believism that just says, comes down to the front and accept the Lord Jesus Christ and everything's fine and just go on. Um, that's not in the Bible. There's a sacrifice. If you're really going to serve God, there, you got to put yourself on an altar of sacrifice. Amen. And you got to give your will to him. And what you want to do, you got to give it up and submit, submit to God. Amen. So uh, basic Christian, the basic idea of Christianity is to imitate Christ in our lives. We, we do outwardly for others what he has done inwardly for us. In other words, he loved us while we were yet sinners, right? Amen. So we love other people while they're in their sin. Amen. And so we 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 love, we do all these things that God uh, <clears throat> did for us. And then verse 2 is talking about don't put all the blame on God for your shortcomings. You need to put your flesh. Everybody say your flesh. Oh, we don't like to say that word. Put it on the altar as a sacrifice, just like Jesus did. Amen. And then you got to give up when you start serving God. You get you got to give up fornication. What what's that word? That's all kinds of sexual sin. Fornication. Verse four, filthiness. You got to give it up. Don't talk dirty. Don't talk off color jokes. Don't talk foolish talking. Don't just silly talking. You're sober minded. And uh, verse 5, an idolater, idolatry is putting anything else before God in my life. God has to be number uno. <laughs> Everybody say, Sister Sarah, amen. Number one, uno. She likes that when I start speaking a little Spanish, but I'm sorry to tell you, all I know beyond that is taco and burrito and all that other stuff, good stuff. <laughs> We are children of the light. What that really means is we are native to the light. Native to the light. Amen. Unfruitful works. When we are born again, the enemy has no right to reproduce his fruit in our lives anymore. And your, your, your uh, homework this next week is to go and read... Uh, Chapters 5 and 6 of Ephesians. How many will, before God, how many will say, I will do that over this next week? Okay, God sees you. So it's not me. Amen. So, because I'm going to go some, through some of these scriptures. I'm not going to read them all because we do not have time. But unfruitful works, verse 11. Uh, the enemy has no right to reproduce his fruit in our lives anymore. We've been saved from that. We've been pulled out of that. Amen. And, and uh, we reprove those things. We expose it. We rebuke it. We discipline it. We convict it. We correct it. And, and there can be no compromise with the unfruitful works of darkness. No compromise. Amen. You can't do just a little bit over here and say, well, I'll be all right. It's just a little bit, just a little toe in the water thing, you know. Can't do that. It's either light or darkness. Amen. And so darkness around us, we should shine the light and expose the darkness. Let me just tell you something. There are some people that won't respect you no matter what, but most people, when they know that 
you really are a solid Christian and trying to do right, they'll stop cussing them in front of you because they feel just, uh, you know, I, I don't feel good about doing that. Amen. They'll, they'll stop telling dirty jokes. Amen. They may be telling a joke, and you walk up, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, I'll tell you later. Amen. If you're, if you're a real Christian and exposing the light on that kind of stuff, they're not going to be comfortable. Amen. When you speak something out of your mouth, you magnify or intensify, amen, it. And that's why this generation is worse than any previous generation because they have put immorality in on the public square. And more than any generation before them, when you speak of something, it reproduces because you give it permission to exist. But the good news is that this works for good things too. People that talk about bad things or immorality, and, and we see it, you see it on the internet, you see it on billboards, you see all this stuff all around us. It's, it's open in every commercial you'll ever look at. Uh, you know, they, every one of them has something in it that, that's not good. Amen. But the good news is we have to shine the light on the darkness. That's our job. We've been called to this area to shine the light on the darkness. Amen. In other words, we go to battle. Amen. We go to fight. Amen. We've got the name of Jesus on our side. And we don't do it in a mean way, but we, we just show them the love of God. And, and the conviction of God comes out of us. Out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Amen. you got to have God inside of you, the spirit inside of you for that to happen. Well, hallelujah. Anyway, anyhow, amen. If you are a Christian, don't let the world lull you to sleep in being passive and just letting darkness be around you. No, no, no. Get one of those things that's on your forehead. There's a light there, and there's a light flashlight in both hands, amen, spiritually, and turn them on. Shine the light, amen. Uh, circumspectly, in verse 15, carefully, purposely, worthily, accurately, amen, do this. And, and uh, verse 16, time, which in this word uh, in, the, in the Greek is karyos, uh, it's, it's special moments of God's visitation it's not chronos which is time measured by the clock amen i think i will put pick that one out and they may not have it back but it says redeeming the time amen the the special moments of god's visitation because the days are evil i mean it's not talking about looking at a clock it's talking about looking at the time that we are living in amen how many know the time we're living in it's not good Wars and rumors of wars, evil beyond our imagination, the, what they call the dark web. I've never been on the dark web, wouldn't even know how to get on the dark web, but I guess there's a dark web out there where you can find everything of immortality, immorality and uh, pedophiles and all that kind of stuff that get on that. Amen. We got to shine the light. This is not a spiritual, or this is not a physical battle, but this is a spiritual battle. Amen. We don't, we don't fight with our hands and, and our fists and our feet and all that. No, we've got to go to prayer. Amen. We've got to build all altars of sacrifices. Amen. Where God will come down and consume the darkness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Everybody say, I'm, I'm glad to be a Christian. I got half of you. Everybody say, I'm glad to be a Christian. All of you that didn't say it, come up here and we're going to pray for you. No, I'm just teasing. There are many parallels between the intoxication of wine. I'm talking about verse number 18 now. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. There are many parallels between the intoxication of wine and the intoxication of the spirit. They were mistaken for being drunk on the day of Pentecost. 
How many know that? How many's read that? You see, when, when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost comes inside of you, you lose your inhibitions. You don't worry about if your hair stays just right. Amen. You don't, you don't, you don't worry about if your tie is all straight and never gets out of place and you got your butt, uh, coat button just right and, and all that. Now, hey, let me tell you something. When the Holy Ghost hits you, I remember days way back in the, 60s and 70s, I, the women, man, they, 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 they get to dancing and shaking their head all over, and bobby pins would fly. They were like bullets, man, flying out from their head. If you get hit by one, it might kill you. Bobby pins going everywhere. And they came with their hair all nice and fixed up, and they leave with it all hanging down, just going crazy. You know, hey, hey amen. Nothing like the Holy Ghost. I said there's nothing like the Holy Ghost. And then verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you something. When you are full of the Holy Ghost and you know you have that relationship with God and you're walking with him every day, you got a song in your heart. How many, how many of you talk to yourselves? Oh, some of y'all are lying right here. You Lord, don't hold it against them. They know not what they do. We all talk to ourselves. Now, my mom used to talk to herself a lot. She, when she was working around the house, she'd just be mumbling to herself. Sometimes I'd sneak up and just listen to her. And back then, we didn't have a dryer, so we hung our clothes out on the clothesline in the backyard. And she'd get, you know, sheets hanging up and all that, and I'd sneak up behind one. And she'd be taking them off, and I hear her just talking. Well, I tell you what, all you know is her husband, my dad. You know, he better not come home drunk tonight. You know, he, she's talking to herself, and all of a sudden she takes a sheet down, and there I am. She'd be, ah! but she was talking to herself all the time. Amen. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost gives you a song in your heart. Amen. There's a melody that you 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 talk to God in. Amen. You speak and sing about God. It's not just listening to others speak and sing about God, but you got a real relationship. You're singing praises just to him. How many have your favorite songs that you like to sing? Just you and God. You might sing it going down the freeway or when nobody hears you because you can't sing. You can't carry a note in a basket. But, man, you're like, ah, you're going down the freeway. Just I've seen people who are head back. They ain't even watching the road. Singing loud as they can. My God. God has chosen submission. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. God has chosen submission as the principle of the kingdom that sets the tone for all relationships. Everybody hear me? That is the principle of the kingdom that sets the tone for all relationships. Amen. Well, somebody say hallelujah. Well, what is submission? When somebody agrees together? No, that's not submission. Submission is when you give up your will. In other words, something you want to do. For mine or for God's, it's submission. Your mission is under God's mission. As a pastor, it's under the pastor's mission. And I, I don't abuse, try, I try very hard not to ever abuse that. There's been some that abuse that, and I know people got hurt and all that. This is not a church that does that. I hope you... Can believe me there. There is no submission when there is not a disagreement or a conflict. Listen to me now. When there is conflict, then there can be submission. If you both agree, then that's just an agreement. You both agree about the same thing. Luckily, we pretty much all agree about the same things. Except every once in a while, things will get in our lives. And maybe I might have to talk to you 
in a loving and kind way. I, I've, I've heard pastors take people in their, in their office and you hear all this yelling and stuff. And it's like, oh, my God. I don't do that. That's not godly. That's not godly. I don't think God does it like that. But you might have a different idea of some things, and if I can prove it by the word of God, then you should submit to the pastor's will. If he can show you in Scripture, here it is, or a something in Scripture that, that tells us what to do about certain things, then you should say, I see that. I submit to your will. Amen. There's a disagreement but then there's submission. Amen. Uh, 22 and 23 goes into uh, the, the mystery of the Christian marriage. Uh, marriage is not really the issue here. The mystery is the issue. God wants you to make uh, your marriage a sacrifice unto him so that people do not see uh, the mystery, can see your marriage through they can understand the mystery of Christ in the church through your marriage. A marriage is a picture of Christ and the church. We are the bride. He is the groom. Amen. And so both the man and a woman are deeply challenged here to play their part. It says wives submit like the church. Husbands love like Christ. Really, a, a more of that, it's really more on the husbands to me. I look at it that way because loving like God is, is hard to do. And really, God says in the process of you struggling to play your roles, you will appreciate even more what I have done for you. Amen. Now, I know there's a lot of abuse, and I know... You go to Dr. Wilson for that, and and uh, there's a lot of things going in the world. There's a lot of bad men. There's a lot of bad women. There's a lot of marriages that wasn't ordained by God, and I, I know all that. And and I'm not saying that somebody has to submit to abuse. I don't believe that. No way. But if you're going to be godly, those of you that are married, you should. The the man should love the woman. Like Christ loved the church. Now, what did Christ do? He gave his all. Amen. And then wives should submit to the husband as he corrects her in love. Amen. And so the only way a marriage can survive for years is the man to crucify his flesh and for the wife to make her flesh submit, not my will but thine. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, commands are dis different. It tells husbands to love your wives. It tells wives to reverence or respect your husband. Husband. And when Satan tempted Eve, he was actually trying to get at Adam. Satan doesn't dare attack God directly. He's already did that and lost. He got kicked out of heaven. And so he attacks the church, which is God's bride. If he can destroy our unity, he can hinder the work of God on this earth. Amen. When a man and a woman connect, they produce fruit just like God and his church. That's why the serpent attacked their union in the Garden of Eden. The church is both the bride of Christ and the body of Christ. Eve was both the bride bride and the body of Adam, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. The fall of humanity didn't play, take place when Eve was deceived and ate. It actually took place when Adam deliberately ate. So, husbands, men, you can't blame it on Eve anymore. Can't blame it on the women. It was Adam's fault. Eve was deceived. But Adam decided. And it was his decision that caused the fall of humanity. And so the sins we commit that are born of deception uh, do not strike at the very nature of our relationship with God. These sins are readily confessed. 
repented and cast aside. If we're deceived or tricked into doing something wrong, then we can easily say, oh, God, forgive me. I, 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 I didn't see that. Forgive me. I don't want to do that anymore. But the sins that we commit out of our will as to conscious decision and plan of action are destructive and deadly to our relationship with God. It's a lot harder to say, God, forgive me for those. Amen. When Adam and Eve both entered into the state of death, everything under the domain came under death. That's what a kingdom is, a domain over which you have dominion. And it is what you rule and what you govern. And when a king falls, his kingdom falls with him. When Eve took the forbidden fruit, Adam knew that she was going to die. And he said, I love her so much, I'm willing to die with her. And then he ate too. At first, Adam's mistake was that he loved the gift. Now listen carefully right here. He loved the gift more than he loved the giver. He loved his wife more than the God who gave his wife to him. Everything they produced after that and everything they had dominion over fell into sin also. In God's eyes, there were only two men ever created, the first Adam and the second Adam. And everything else was born of one of them. God brought forth a bride out of the first Adam, and God brought forth a bride out of out of the second Adam, out of his side came blood and water. Hallelujah. The first Adam said, since my wife is going to die, I'll die with her. But the second Adam said, since my wife is already dead, I'll die for her. Oh, hallelujah. That's the beauty of the cross. Amen. That's the beauty of the crucifixion. Amen. We were already dead in our sins and trespasses, but God said, I will die for them. I will make myself a body. Amen. I'm not going to send down God Jr. to do it. I'm going to make myself a body, and it's going to be uh, conceived of the Spirit. Amen. And I am going to grow up, and there's only one reason that I created myself a body, and that was to die for my bride who is already dead. Clap your hands to Jesus. Sin is not normal behavior for a believer. Sin is never to be routine for the believer. Sin is not inevitable for the believer. Don't let the enemy tell you, well, you're, you're, just, you're a sinner and you're never going to be nothing. That's a lie of the enemy. And he, when his lips are moving, he's lying. We are set free. Well, hallelujah, I said, we are set free. We are set free. <laughs> Some of you still got today on your mind. We are set free. Now, when you really realize that means you don't have to go to hell and burn, and you're going to go to a place where you walk on streets of gold, you ought to jump up and down and shout hallelujah. Amen. Oh, but I, I know, I know it's, it's Tuesday night. We only do that on Sundays. Sorry. I love you all. You got to love me to go to heaven. Come on. So, we're going to go on to... Chapter number six, we're talking about becoming what you believe. Amen. I believe we should know what we believe. We believe in one God. I said, my God. Am I in one of those nodding churches? Just going to give me a nod. We are folks that believe in one God. Amen. In chapter 6, Paul uh, is, is writing here, and uh, what time is it? I'll be done in about 10 minutes, so I won't be too far off here. 
Chapter 6, Paul is going to teach us about wearing the armor of God. But before he gets us ready to war, he teaches us to submit first. There's a, there's a scripture, I, I can't remember where it's at, but it's, we, we like to use it a lot. And the devil will flee from you. We like to use that last part of that. Man, the devil's going to flee from you because you're you. But no, the first part of that scripture says, submit yourselves, therefore, to Christ, I think. Then the devil will flee from you. Yeah, James chapter 4. When you are submitted and in the will of God, the devil do, does not want to mess with you. Please hear me here. He knows, oh, there's no winning in that one. Hey, you guys get away from that one. They're going to cast you into outer darkness. Don't mess with them because they are walking hand in hand with God. That means they got the power of God behind them. You don't want to mess. So he goes around and tries to find those that are not unsubmitted to God. But think that they are bad dudes or bad women, you know. I came from the streets, you know. Yeah, well, street creds don't don't do much in that spiritual fight. I'm sorry. If you really want to be a tough individual, then submit your will. <laughs> oh, the lower you go, the higher you go. Oh, I must decrease. And he must increase. I must decrease. He must increase. Let me tell you something. The more he increases, the more powerful you are, a saint of God, a warrior of God. And it's exactly opposite of our human nature. Our human nature said, no, you want to do it. I did it my way. Was that a good Sinatra for you? Yeah, he's turning over in his grave right now because he didn't do it his way. He did it the devil's way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I got off on a tangent there. We have to bring our will and, under, and understanding into line with really military standards, that's what Paul's talking about here, codes, rules, regulations, way of thinking. Our relationship with God is the only relationship in which, which we know that the other party is right all the time. God don't make mistakes. He's always right. But God puts us in human relationships where there are times that the authority we are submitted to is not right. Why? Why? So we can learn submission to him, not them. You know what? You are better off. Let me give you some, some good advice. And I know it may not sound fair. And you might say, ah, that, I'm not going to do that. But let me tell you, you want to be blessed? There are times, I'm human. I can make a mistake. I've seen situations. I was on the board for 16 years. I've been a part of counseling situations. Amen. Where ministers or pastors had made mistakes they're human they make mistakes but let me tell you something you're better off i've seen some saints i'm gonna take the pastor on come on you're gonna lose because god's god still backs up those he's called i think dr wilson kind of said something about this on sunday god will back up his his servants even though God still backed up David. Well, he made a lot of mistakes. Amen. And so, you're better off not getting in that fight. You're better off letting God handle those he's called. And believe me, he knows how to do that. God can give a whipping or a beating better than anybody. So, don't get in that middle. Amen. Just obey God. Submit your will. And, and God knows your heart. And you say, God, I, I, don't, I don't think this is right. I don't see it in your word. Or I, I, it's, a very, it's against your word. But, God, I, I don't want to go against your call. So 
Lord, I'm going to submit. Hmm. Hallelujah. Eventually, God will move that one out. Amen. Verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. All the children out. Hallelujah. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children unto wrath, but bring them up to the nurture and admit, admission of the, of the Lord. Excuse me. Amen. The best time to learn submission and obedience is as a young child. Parents, don't neglect to teach respect for authority to your children. I know today's a different day. When I was young, my mom would go out there and get a switch off the peach tree, and it had little knobs on it, you know, and man, it stung for three days when you took a shower. You had those welts on you. I know doing that today might get you going to jail. Yeah, that's the problem. Amen. They won't let you touch your child, and, and your child knows that, and they'll turn you in sometimes. But let, you don't have to whip them or beat them to teach them respect for authority. You, if there's an elder, you don't, don't, if you're a kid in a group of elders, don't talk first. Talk when they talk to you. You don't have any wisdom to tell everybody. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't encourage them to talk and say something. We do that because we love them. Amen. But you need to teach them respect and authority for your children. And the reason we're seeing so many riots and people, uh, kids, I'm talking about some of them 12, 13, 14 year old robbing stores and shooting people out on the street they don't even know just for fun is because their parents were, were gone. Their parents didn't teach them a bit of respect or anything for authority. And so they're out there running the streets. And so, uh, God, listen, but Pastor, they just don't understand me. Duh. God doesn't expect children to understand everything their parents tell them to do. That's why you've got to start telling them. He just expects them to obey. Now, there's got to be something that lets your child know that they've done something wrong or they've done something that they should not do. You figure that out as the parent. That's on you. Don't come to me to, to correct your children. I've had them over the years. Well, I'm going to tell pastor what you, oh, no, don't, don't get me involved doing the work for you. My God, I had my own children. Amen. And this spiritual, in, in the spirit, this principle applies to God's children us we should have total reverence for God reverence for those called reverence for elders amen they tell you something one of the ushers tells you you know what if, if you've gotten up two times to go to the bathroom you're supposed to get that done before church so you don't have to do that but if you go a couple of times during church the usher might say hey go sit down and we got some parents that say, hey, don't tell my kid what to do. What's wrong with you? You are teaching them, and they'll, they'll be out, they'll be robbing you before it's all over. Mm, how did I get into all that? All. Verses 2 and 3 talk about it's comparing the lives of those having respect for authority with the lives of those who don't. All behavior has consequences. All behavior. Amen. But there's a, a big difference. Amen. Six. Uh, I'm going to read that real quick. Two and three. 
Honor thy father and mother, which is the first, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. There's consequences. Amen. If you're disobedient to your parents, it may not be well with you as you grow up. I've seen people uh, reaping what they sowed in their in their uh, teenage years and stuff. And so if you can learn a principle on any level or at any age, you can learn it on every level. Amen. God's plan for his people, verse 4, is filled with checks and balances. Submission must occur in an environment of mutual submission. The command, command, command is given to the Father. Our society, our society leaves nurturing to the mother. Amen. The Father gives the commands. The Father sets the rules. And the mother nurtures the kids. That's the picture of it. Children learn their values from an authority figure at home. But in today's world, going back a few years, they started leaving that authority to the schools, to daycare centers. And the, the problem is these schools and daycare centers, now we're starting to look at their curriculum, and they're teaching them that, oh, it's all right, you can... You can become a girl if you're a boy, and you can become a boy if you're a girl, and 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 we'll give you, we'll give you pills. We'll help you with medication. Just you don't even have to tell your mom and dad. Is that not true, Doctor Wilson? Is that, Amen. So, you can't trust the school to do it, because God planned it for the father to do it. Amen. And there's been a lot of problem with the fathers not being there, and available. Amen. It happens in poor families. It happens in rich families. Rich families, the father can be so tied up in work that he's hardly ever home. Amen. God simplified the New Testament church structure by giving only one job opening to every member. If you are a member of the church, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, God has given you one job. You want to know what it is? Ah, you may not want to know what it is. You really want to know what it is? Servant. Wasn't he, he showed us what to do, right? By his action. Jesus knelt down and washed his disciples' feet. The term means a servant is so devoted that even if they were offered their freedom, they would refuse it because of their lifelong commitment to their beloved master. If the devil came along and said, hey, you can serve me. I'll give you the million dollars. I'll give you the cars. I'll give you fame. I'll give you all that. You should say, no, no, no. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That contract runs out. I got a contract that's going to go through eternity. Amen. Amen. As slaves or servants to Christ, we are truly free. In Exodus 21, it gives us a, a picture of this. 5 and 6 says, If the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him into the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or into the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. If the servant chooses that and says, I love my master. I'm so glad that I can say, I love my master. I choose to serve him. The only difference there and now is he, God's not going to pull you in, put your ear up on a doorpost and knock a hole in it. He just supplies his blood to your life. He supplies his love to your life. I'm not teaching about this tonight, but just let me tell you something. Uh, you see all these piercing. Now you see these ears got big old holes in them. They're hanging down. Do you know where that comes from? Should study it out a little bit. None of us has a justifiable excuse for ever saying this job is beneath me. Being a servant, oh, that's beneath me. 
Sorry if you think you're too good for the job, but no other openings are available in God's kingdom. It's the servant's job. None of us ever have a justifiable reason for ever saying they were using me at that church. That's why we got into God's kingdom to be used by the Lord. <laughs> Y'all believe that? Four of you, okay. Uh, the ninth verse, God is no respecter of persons. Tells us that in Acts 10, 34. But he is a respecter of principles and of passion. When you are in a position of leadership, don't ever take advantage of others. No one should lead who has never followed. If you've never submitted, you should never be in a leadership position. Because you don't know the basic facts anymore. Yet. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Joshua was a great leader because he had submitted to a flawed leader like Moses. Read it for yourself. And so why has Paul spent so much time talking about submission? Because when soldiers are submitted, they will not break rank and they will win. And there are things that God will show you and even let you taste, but he then he will expect you to fight a man for it. Praise God. The strength of God is not proven by how much you can avoid work and being a servant, but it is proven by how much you can endure, just like Jesus did on the cross. And so I, I know I've got to hurry. I'm about five minutes over. And so he tells in verse 11, put on the armor of God, Put off your own ideas and strategies. The devil's too smart for you if you fight in your own strength, the wiles, the trickery of the devil. Uh, verse 12, don't respond in the flesh because you're actually being attacked in the spirit. Don't let the problem back you off from the promise. We have become so secular that we think everything we are facing is natural. Let me reemphasize. Today, sometimes we counsel instead of wrestle, but it doesn't help. There comes a time, counsel, counsel is good, but there comes a time when you just got to fight it in Jesus' name. Amen. And it's, it's his armor, but it's our stand that we make. And we must engage in spiritual warfare because Satan opposes every step we take. Amen. It's not without a struggle that we're going to win, but we got to be willing to submit to God and get in the struggle. And so I'm going to go through it very, very quickly. People are not your enemy. The devil is your enemy. And so every piece of the armor of God pertains to our identity in Christ. The loins gird about with truth. That means it base your entire life on having pure motives. Amen. Loins gird about with truth. Breastplate of righteousness, guard your heart with holiness. Feet shod with peace, lack of peace indicates there's a lack of balance in your life. The shield of faith, soak your shield in the word of God. Amen. The helmet of salvation, keep your mind on one thing, salvation. Keep your mind on the promise. Amen. He's, going, he's coming back to this earth. We're going to be with him. And there is a heaven and there is a hell. Sword of the Spirit to wield the sword. You got to know the word. <laughs> if you never get into the word of God and learn it, how can you pull the sword? You don't even know what to say. It's just a dull, unsharpened sword. You're going to club them this to the cut them. But you got to know the word so you can use the sword of the spirit. Amen. This generation has done more with praise than every generation, but they still haven't learned how to pray. There's got to be a balance there. When the church doesn't pray, we are not even on the battleground. 
Pray through a problem. Pray the details. Don't just pray to God, say, well, you know everything, God, that I'm going through, so I'm not going to repeat. No, he wants to hear from you. Lord, I'm having a problem in this situation. I need you to intercede. I need you to undertake. I'm trying to do your will, Lord. Please, please have your will and your way. But I'm asking you I'm in supplication. This is what I need, what I think I need anyway. Amen? How many is glad you're a Christian? Let's stand and clap our hands to the Lord. Come on, let's all clap our hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for your spirit that gets down inside of us. Lord, we thank you tonight for your presence that has been in here. I ask you to bless each and every, every saint that is here, every person that is here. Lord, I ask you to go with us. And keep us, God, and bring us back again to worship you again. Help us to tell somebody about what has happened in our life. And we'll give you the praise and the glory. Everybody said amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.